Right then. Well, how are you feeling? You still alive? Good. You know what an insight is, yeah? Just checking. OK, good. We'll take a vote in a minute. Um, I was told, Nick started with a whinging, and I'm going to continue, that I had six minutes. I was also told that it was a Pecha Kucha. By the way, how many people have done Pecha Kucha? Hey, congratulations. Right, I recommend you try it, but you're just about to see it. OK? So if you don't understand the rules, I'm going to do this, which is basically, because I was told I had six minutes and 20 seconds per slide, I've picked 18 slides, and they're just going to start when I give the command. That wasn't the command, by the way. <laughs> and um, I'm going to kind of start talking around the slides, so we're just quite clear about that. If the slides end and I haven't finished, I'm dead. Are we clear? <laughs> right. Now I think I've got your attention. Right. Start the wind up. Okay, and I think we're ready to begin. So, my name is John Griffiths. I want to introduce something to you uh, called the Barefoot Insider, Barefoot Insighting. And I want to explain to you what insights are and uh, hopefully to help you to find a lot more insights than you are used to finding. Now, I think that insights are like the bubbles in the Coke. When you open the bottle, the bubbles show up. The problem is it's quite unpredictable, isn't it? Because you can't predict when and where they'll show up. And insiders don't usually like doing this. Now, the insight about insights that I want to start off with is that insights are relational. They're about when knowledge is exchanged between people in the insight gathering business. And just a word against Google here, my apologies to our hosts, they can't be mined by Google's latest AI engine. You have to include people. Now, to quote the Clue Train manifesto, a market is a conversation between clients and their customers, and Gerald Zoltman was more specific. A market is constructed out of the exchange between the way a client thinks about a market and the way the consumers think. They don't see eye to eye, and the difference between these two is where insights come from. So my definition of an insight is, it's a discovery which changes that big market conversation. Pause, stun silence. Moving on quickly. So there are three types of insight. One, new news, something you'd never seen before. Two, new perspectives on something you thought you knew, but it was actually, whoops, you need to reframe it. And three, recalibration of the client's worldview because it had shifted. The question is, how are marketers going to understand the mind of the customer if they're so different? Ah, well, that's where you need barefoot insiders because these are the people that go into the middle ground to facilitate between the different worlds. And, of course, Avatar is a brilliant movie about how fragile that can be and the conflict of interest which intermediaries experience in that space. Now, for me... Insights, it's a little bit like a kaleidoscope. Now, when I teach this, I do this in a whole day, okay? I actually get people to build their own kaleidoscopes because it's the best way to show how it works. There's the interplay of the eyepiece, the marketer, the customers as the beads at the end of the table, with the researcher playing a key role by using mirrors to filter out the beads by amplifying a sample. And if you buy that analogy, the point is that insights don't come from insiders. We're the mirror, not the lens. It works when every, everyone acts together, when they interact, and you need to know as much about the, customer's mind, the client's mindset as the customer's. Pause. I can breathe. This is great. Okay. So to summarize, we've seen that markets are conversations based on exchange, and the discovery of insights comes from the interplay between those three things. But now I've got a few seconds to introduce you to the whole of informatics how knowledge is created, how it's stored, and how insights follow that trajectory. Because an insight always starts with something that has never been put into words, and we've had something of that tonight. When it becomes a research finding, stage two, it's put into words for the first time, in written form. But to grow, the insight has to connect with existing knowledge, which it subtly changes. And once it's put to use, it becomes a piece of culture, the way we do things and something we take for granted. Then it dies when the next insight comes along, because insights all have a sell-by date. Now, did you know that your organizations aren't just machines to make uh, wealth, but to create knowledge, turning unspoken knowledge, which is the bottom left, into verbalized knowledge, adding to what's already known, combining it, then externalizing it in the market, the way the brand operates, internalizing it inside the company in terms of culture. It, to be an effective insider, you have to understand how your organizations make and store knowledge. So here is the process by which all organizations do it. Another pause for thought. So here we go. The unspoken, the unrecognized, being organized into concepts to join with existing knowledge. And when it becomes culture, what everyone knows, then it becomes what we call tacit again. Now, this happens with every single piece of market knowledge that you have. That's the point. 
And that's hopefully giving you an understanding as to how insights are made. Now, because it's a process, there's nothing random about where insights come from. Where there are key transition points in the creation of knowledge, insights are likely to shoal like a school of fish. So now you know where to look out for them. So it's partly that, but it's partly where knowledge changes its form. From tacit to explicit, from explicit to explicit, from explicit to tacit. We'll share the slides. That's where you find them. And wherever there's a handover to a new person in the process, there's an exchange, another sweet spot where the fish love to shoal. So if you've managed to follow this lightning tour of informatics, and I've taken you through it three times, if you've noticed, you will understand we have a series of transition points where the fish, that's the insights, are much more likely to shoal. Now you know they're there. You can anticipate when the insights are going to show up, and you've got six times as many places to find them. But please, please, don't wait until the client asks you in the debrief presentation if you've got any more insights. I'm sure we've all been there. <coughs> because by then you've missed most of the transition points. You can go back and reanalyze, but the live fish will have long gone. So build insight hunting into your project design and your daily practice. You can get insights from the briefing, for goodness sake. Here's two lots of advice for you. Too much time and <laughs> to talk about not enough time. First of all, build an insight protection program. Insights are like creative ideas. Email them to the client. They'll be murdered on arrival. You know that. So just like children and witnesses, they need protecting while they're young and vulnerable to build them up. <laughs> Lastly, Recognize the legitimate division of labor between barefoot insiders who find insights and the client team who have to implement them. We are in the energy business. We make fuel. They're in the momentum business. They're engineers to move their organizations forward. The more we help them to understand that momentum is the benefit, the more they'll value what we do. I've just given you a day course in six minutes using 18 slides. My name is John Griffiths. You'd be listening to the Barefoot Insider. If you want to learn how to do a bit more barefoot insighting, give me a call. Follow me on Twitter, follow the website, I thank you.